In part four of our mini-series covering adjusting entries, we're going to cover posting our entries to our accounts, we're going to create an adjusted trial balance, and we're going to use that information to create financial statements. If you haven't watched part one, I'll link that up in the corner. I'd recommend that you start there. Otherwise, trauma, frustration, and weeping, and nobody needs that. Welcome to Accounting How To. I'm your host, Carolyn Grimm. That's my sidekick, Terrence, and we're here to put the fun in accounting fundamentals. Now, a lot of times when we're learning accounting, we're doing pieces, and it's hard to know the full picture because we're getting all of these different blocks of information. So as you're learning accounting, think of it as you're learning different blocks of information that you're then going to build into something. So it's like building a Lego creation, right? You're putting together this piece and you're putting together that piece and then there's this piece over here. And then finally you bring them all together and oh my goodness, you've just built an incredible Tyrannosaurus Rex. Don't let it go to your head, okay bud? The next time you see me, I will magically pop up into a spreadsheet. It's one of my superpowers. So when we did this um, series of journal entries in the Analyzing Transactions video series, we started out with a chart of accounts. And I have this chart of accounts here. The items that are colored are from our first original chart of accounts. Now we've added on to this chart of accounts so that we have the accounts that we need to track everything for our business. So we've added on some assets. We added on prepaid insurance, inventory, truck, and our accumulated depreciation contra asset. We've added on some new liabilities. We've got our wages payable. We've got our unearned rent. And those will all seem familiar to you if you've done the second and third videos in this series. And then we've also added another revenue account. We added some rent revenue and some new expenses have come along. We've got cost of goods sold. We've got utilities, wages, insurance, and depreciation expense. Now it's absolutely fine to add accounts to your chart of accounts. Things change, you need to track something different, you buy a new asset. So you can always add on to your chart of accounts. Perfectly fine to do that. Now let's jump into our original journal entries. So in the second and third videos, I talked about how you need to understand what the original transaction was so that you can understand how it needs to be adjusted. And so what I've done here is I've kept all of our old journal entries from, these are the regular things that happened every day. Um, Joe Smith started a business, put some money in. Um, we bought some supplies on account. All of those items are here but I've added on some transactions so that we have something to work with with our adjusting entries. So here is the purchase of a truck, which we paid cash for. Here is the purchase of an inventory, which we paid cash for. And then here is us receiving rent from a customer. They are prepaying their rent. So for us, it is unearned rent because we have not earned that revenue yet. And then we have prepaid insurance because we have paid our insurance for the whole year. Now, one transaction that I took out of here was our supplies and supplies expense transaction because when we talked about that in the analyzing transactions playlist, this was a typical transaction that you see in your first accounting class where they try to trip you up with uh, moving things from an asset to an expense. And it's actually an adjusting entry. So I took that out so that we can start fresh here. So these are our journal entries that were the original entries. And this spreadsheet is going to be available for you in the description of these videos so that you can download it and you can go through it um, at your leisure because I know sometimes it's not really a lot of fun to watch other people do accounting but when you do it yourself, maybe it's more fun. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. So from this point, we took our journal entries and we posted them to our general ledger accounts, which is this screen right here. So here are all of our accounts. We have posted each transaction. Here's our original transaction with our business owner. He put $55,000 into the business to open up a business checking account. So we're debiting cash by 
$55,000, and the other side of that transaction is here with Joe Smith's capital account. So we credited that $55,000. So all we've done here is we've gone back and forth between our journal entries and our accounts, and we posted each and every one of those into those accounts. And then we have kept a running balance of um, all of those accounts. So when we finish up on June 30th, the last day of the month rolls around, we have updated balances for all of our accounts. And that's the point that we're at right now. From there, we took that information into what we now know of as the unadjusted trial balance. So all we've done here is we've pulled our balances. Here's our cash balance of 26,730. We've pulled it over here to our cash account line of 26,730. So all we've done is we've pulled all of those balances here. Their credit balances, they go on the credit side. If they're debit balances, they go on the debit side. And then we are checking to see that our debits equal our credits, and they do. Fantastic. Love it. So this is our jumping off point for doing our adjusting entries. So here we go. Here are the adjusting entries that we talked about in the second and third videos. So the first one is that we have fees earned, but not yet billed to the customer for $12,000. And this is the example that I used of with my business. If I have a, a project that carries from one month to another month, then I have revenue in that first month. And even though I haven't billed my customer yet, I still need to recognize that revenue. So in this case, Joe Smith has done whatever Joe Smith does, and he has fees that he has earned, but he's not yet billed the customer for $12,000. So our adjusting journal entry is accounts receivable $12,000 debit, and fees earned our revenue account for $12,000. Then we had wages that we owe to our employees. They've earned the wages, we've incurred the expense, but payday doesn't happen until next month. So we debited wages expense for 5,000, credited wages payable for 5,000. And then we had one month's rent that was used for our tenant, $3,000. So it's currently sitting in unearned rent. We want to take it out of there. So we're going to reduce that liability account by $3,000. And we've now earned that rent, our revenue. So we're going to increase that by $3,000. This is the transaction that I took out from our original set of transactions for the Analyzing Transactions video series. And now we're putting it back in. It's the same transaction. We used $2,050 of supplies in June. So it's sitting in our asset account called supplies. We've used up some of that. So now we're going to move it to our supplies expense. So we're going to debit supplies expense by 2050, and we're going to credit, reduce our supplies asset by 2050. Now, previously we had prepaid for a year's worth of insurance. Now we have used up one month of that insurance. So we're going to move from prepaid insurance into our insurance expense. So we're increasing insurance expense and we're decreasing our asset called prepaid insurance. And then we said we needed to book our depreciation for the month. And we determined that one month depreciation on our truck is $100. So we're going to increase depreciation expense by $100 and we're going to credit our accumulated depreciation contra asset for $100. Then we had inventory that we purchased and we used $1,300 of that in the month of June. So we need to move that out of our inventory account by crediting our asset for $1,300 and we need to move it into our new expense account called cost of goods sold for $1,300. So we're increasing our cost of goods sold. And then in the final transaction, we had utilities expense that we incurred, but we have not received the bill yet. And we're estimating that bill is going to be $600. So we're going to, so because of the matching principle, we need that expense to be in the same month with the revenue that it earned. So we're going to debit our utilities expense by $600, and we're going to credit our accounts payable by $600. So we're going to take those accounts and then we're going to bring them over to our general ledger and we're going to put those into each one of those accounts just as we did with our regular journal entries. So we're going to debit accounts receivable. We'll come over here. 
accounts receivable, we're debiting accounts receivable. Now the one difference is up till now when we've had this item column, we have left that blank. So now what we want to do for adjusting entries is we want to put the word adjusting next to those entries. And this helps us when we're looking at our accounts to pick out those adjusting journal entries easily. So I've gone through and I've posted all of those adjusting journal entries in the accounts in which they belong and updated the balances. So the next step is to do an adjusted trial balance. And all we're doing here is taking our newly updated balances and bringing them into a new trial balance called an adjusted trial balance. So here's our original trial balance, which we now know is our unadjusted trial balance. And here is our adjusted trial balance. So you'll see, for example, that accounts receivable has changed. It was 3,800. It is now 42,800 because of the entry that we did for the customer that we build. Our supplies number has changed. It's gone from 3,300 to 1,250. So all of those balances have been updated and it gives us at the bottom, hopefully we will be in balance and we are. Once we get to this point, this is the point where we can actually go and do our financial statements. So just to recap, we had our original journal entries. We posted them to our accounts. We did our unadjusted trial balance. We did our adjusting entries. We did our adjusted trial balance. And now we get to do financial statements. Woohoo! So everything that you need to figure out your financial statements is right here in this adjusted trial balance. So let's jump over to this screen and take a look at that. So here I've done a really simple, not prettied up income statement, statement of owner's equity and balance sheet. So where are we getting our revenue? Well, we're getting it right from our adjusted trial balance. Here it is right here. We've got fees earned of 61,100 and we've got rent revenue of $3,000. So here we've added those up so we know what our total revenue is. It's 64100 And then we've pulled over all of our expense amounts, giving us total expenses of 27930 We take our total revenue minus our total expenses, and that gives us a net income or profit of 36170 Now we need to do our income statement first because that information then gets pulled into our next piece, which is our statement of owner's equity. So in our statement of owner's equity, because this is a new business, we started out with beginning owner's equity of zero. And what we're looking at here is what is the change in the value of the owner's equity? So we started out at zero. The owner made investments totaling $55,000. The owner had withdrawals of $18,300, and we had a net income. Net income increases equity, right? The owner has more value in his business because he had a profit. So we bring this over here into this account called retained earnings. Retained earnings is simply taking this month's profit or loss, next month's profit or loss, the month after that, it will be an accumulating number. But in this case, this is the first month that we're in business, so our retained earnings is the same as our profit for the month of June. So we bring that over here. We take our beginning balance plus our owner's investments minus our owner's withdrawals plus or minus our profit or loss gives us our ending owner's equity. When we come around to the month of July, our beginning owner's equity is going to be 72,870. So now let's jump over into our balance sheet. So in order to do our balance sheet, we first needed to get our net income, which then carried over to our statement of owner's equity, and then that carries over to our capital, our equity accounts on the balance sheet. So in the first column, we have our asset and we're pulling those asset amounts right from our adjusted trial balance. Here are our assets right here, this batch right here. And then we're doing the same thing for our liabilities. We're pulling those over from our adjusted trial balance. And then our equity numbers are coming from both our adjusted trial balance and from our 
statement of owner's equity, pulling over that retained earnings piece. And our balance sheet closely mirrors the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So that's the whole process that we go through in order to get from our original journal entry transactions all the way through to doing our financial statements. And again, this spreadsheet will be in the description so you can download it and go through it at your leisure. Until next time, stay balanced, my friends.